This week on Christian World News, the search for Mount Sinai, one man's quest to track the journey of the Jews as they made their exodus from Egypt. Plus, he rescues, rescues those in danger and serves those in need. Meet the hero who does it all out of love. And anger in America's capital, the nation's leaders divided by party lines. See how prayer crosses the divide and brings them together. And welcome to Christian World News, everyone. I'm Wendy Griffith, and Happy New Year to you. Well, the book of Exodus tells the story of the Hebrews' flight from Egypt, how God delivered them from Pharaoh's army at the Red Sea crossing and led them to Mount Sinai, where he gave Moses the Ten Commandments. Biblical scholars have argued for years about the location of these holy sites. Now, one man says he might have found them. Take a look. For generations, we have been taught that we had to believe the story of the Exodus on faith alone. We were told that Mount Sinai, where Moses received the Ten Commandments, was located in Egypt, but there was no real evidence to make it believable. The Bible says over 70 times that the Israelites went out of Egypt, which would be mostly or entirely modern-day Saudi Arabia. These sites were being kept secret by the Saudi regime that hid them from the world using fences and police and the threat of force. Using contacts we cannot disclose and methods we cannot disclose, we got to the forbidden sites. We were frequently approached by Saudis eager to talk to Americans for the first time. One of the first things they'd say with excitement is, did you know Moses was here? Let me show you where he and his people were. Is it true that there is very little evidence that the Exodus story happened, or have we actually just been looking in the wrong spot? Wow. Ryan Morrow made the documentary, The Mountain of Moses, Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia, and joins us now. Ryan, what led you to go to Saudi Arabia in search of these sites? It must have been a little dangerous. Right. So the Saudis uh, do block off these archaeological sites that we believe are linked to Moses and the Exodus, uh, which prevented really high quality video and photo photos from coming out to the outside world. So this theory that Mount Sinai is in Saudi Arabia didn't really get the treatment that it deserved. Um, and really, the reason that I went is because shortly after I became a Christian, uh, I was aware that there was this academic consensus that the Exodus story didn't happen because at the traditional Mount Sinai, the area has been combed um, at this spot in Egypt, and they found very little evidence. But there's this alternative theory that has a growing amount of support for it that we've actually just been looking in the wrong spot, and the evidence is just stunning. Ryan, you believe that you found the actual Mount Sinai, right? I don't want to say that I found it because I was following in the footsteps of others. There were small numbers of, of Americans who had tried to go to this real Mount Sinai and had been arrested and their evidence confiscated. Um, but I am one of a very small uh, number of Americans and outsiders to get access to these places. And when you follow the Bible, very literally, the directions that are contained within the book of Exodus using this new theory, you run into evidence of almost everything that is described from the Red Sea crossing to the journey uh, to Mount Sinai. And it's just, uh, I'm, it's a bit of a miracle that I got to go. <laughs> and I can't believe that I even got to go. <laughs> and you can't tell us all the details, but we'll be okay. All right. So you also talk about, uh, as you mentioned just now, finding the likely place that the Jewish people cross the Red Sea. What did it look like? How, how did you, how, what did the locals say? 
Well, there are there were some Saudi locals that were aware that that is where the Red Sea crossing happened. You can see over on the Egyptian side of the Gulf of Aqaba, uh, where the the valley that they would have traveled through is very narrow and leads to a big beach called Nueva Beach that could have fit millions of Israelites. And just like accounts outside the Bible say, and the Bible itself says, they would have been shut in by the mountains with only one path behind them, blocked off by Pharaoh's army, and the Red Sea in front of them. And right at this location, uh, there is an underwater land path. So if the water were, were actually parted, they would have to have somewhere to walk. And there is a place for them to walk over into Saudi Arabia, just like the story says, mm -hmm. and it's at a, an angle that is walkable. It's not too steep, and, and so logistically, it makes sense. So you said, uh, we saw in the video there, the locals actually will come up and say, look, did you, you know Moses was here, and they actually know this there, right? They are so proud of it. Uh, it's very common that if you're just out in a, at a supermarket or just out in the desert and a Saudi sees you, one of the first things they'll say is, hey, did you know that Moses and the Yahud, the Jews, were here? Uh, that, that's what we've known for generations, and I'd like to show you where it is. So Saudis are very proud uh, in northwestern Saudi Arabia of this tradition that they live where Moses and the Israelites walked. And you talked about the the underwater evidence of the Red Sea that there there actually is this this little land bridge there under the water right now. Right. So uh, think try to think of all of this as a cynic. What would be necessary for this miraculous story to actually take place? And you would need a land bridge uh, because you just part the waters and then there's no land. Where are you going to go? And furthermore, if there is land and it's too steep, well, then people can't walk across it. So it's really amazing that just right at that location uh, where, as Christians, we believe God led them to, uh, God would have been aware that there is a land bridge un uh, under the water. And so if the waters are parted, they could escape into Saudi Arabia. And then Pharaoh's army uh, would, would be destroyed once the waters came back over it. Um, but then even from there, uh, there are multiple places that the book of Exodus talks about the Israelites going to, such as Elam, where there are 12 wells and 70 palms. Today, if you follow those instructions of the book of Exodus from the Red Sea crossing point, you will come into a match for Elam that to this day has 12 wells. Real quick, Ryan, where can people see your documentary? Then go to YouTube and type in Finding the Mountain of Moses. And I encourage everyone to show it at their church and, and let us know how many people saw it and what the feedback was. Oh, absolutely fascinating. Groundbreaking. Thank you so much, Ryan. Uh, great to have you on our first show of the new year. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. Well, coming up, meet the former Army Ranger turned missionary who uses his special forces training to save lives and rescue souls. God Almighty is a God of blessing. He always wants to bless his people. But how do you get that blessing? And what principles will unlock that secret? In Miraculous Blessings, Pat Robertson shows you how to open the floodgates of God's awesome blessings in your life. In order to have a blessing, you've got to be blessable. Discover what the Bible has to say about God's covenant of blessing, the laws of blessing, and what are the hindrances to the blessings of God? The words of Jesus, they are as valid as the law of gravity. And if we follow those laws, we will be blessed. You'll see amazing true stories of everyday people whose lives were rescued and transformed by God's miraculous blessings. But even the doctors acknowledge that this had to be a miracle. Call 1-800-700-7000 or visit CBN.com to become a CBN partner and get miraculous blessings today. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. My husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated. 
and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. A Florida boy's mission to help the homeless capture the attention of evangelist Franklin Graham. Graham wrote, Dylan, in, Dylan Martin is just eight years old, but he's making a difference in people's lives. He said, God spoke to me through this feeling and led me to spread his word in everything that I do. Graham said, Dylan didn't save his money, $250 dollars from birthdays and Christmas to buy food and other items for the homeless. Well, Dave Eubank is a former U.S. Army Ranger turned missionary. He uses his special forces training to help some of the most oppressed people in the world. Some say he's an American hero, including a man many admire for his own military service. Jennifer Wishon sat down with Oliver North, who is sharing Eubank's story with the world. I met Dave several years ago uh, in Iraq, uh, took an instant liking to the guy. Colonel Oliver North met Dave Eubank on Sinjar Mountain, the notorious place where the Yazidi people faced genocide at the hands of ISIS. The sound of the guns always ran to them. It's what I was made to do. North was instantly impressed. He's a believer. He's a man of extraordinary energy. He's got his entire family out there wife and three lovely children. This year, North became president of the National Rifle Association. In addition to leading the organization, he's highlighting America's bravest on NRA TV in the form of Oliver North's American Heroes. Eubank is the subject of his first episode. He's the kind of person I like to keep company with. I like keeping company with heroes, and he certainly is one. When Eubank retired as an Army Special Forces officer, he felt the call to the missions field. He founded the Free Burma Rangers, men and women trained to help people facing persecution and oppression in Myanmar, Sudan, Kurdistan, and other parts of the world. Their mission is simple, offer help, hope, and love in the name of Jesus. Of course, in the aftermath of ISIS and the horrific murders that were occurring, he ended up probably more gunfights than most people in the Marine Corps or the Army Special Forces have been in. He's been there to help those people fighting for the right side. This is a missionary who takes up arms, who rides around in armored vehicles from time to time. Does that seem odd to you? Well, not knowing the circumstances, though, and I've been embedded out there 60 some odd times, so I know what the circumstances are like. He, he would not survive without armored vehicles. I mean, if you look at the windshield on his vehicle, uh, it had bullet holes in it before he got into the big fight that we've got coverage of. That big fight happened as the Iraqi army, backed by U.S. forces, worked to retake the city of Mosul from ISIS. The biggest hospital in Mosul had been seized by ISIS, and they turned it into a multi-story anti-aircraft position, anti-armor position, sniper position, and hundreds of, of ISIS fighters inside it. And they were killing the civilians who were trying to flee. And Dave came upon a, a scene where this there was a little girl whose mother was dead, everyone around her is dead, and Dave saw her and said, I'm going to save her. Uh, she'd been out there for several days, no water, no food, and basically clinging to her mother's clothing. And I thought, there's no way I'm going to live through this. It wasn't fatalistic, it was just kind of logical. You're not going to make it on this one. But damn, that kid's still there. I got to do something. And I just felt, it's now or never. Because Dave is so good at what he does, he called on his cell phone to a U.S. Army officer who put him in touch with the, its Marine artillery battery and asked for smoke to screen his movement. Came up behind an Iraqi tank. Uh, they, you see Dave running in that. Dave can run a lot faster than I can. And he's not quite as old, but I, I watched that scene and say, what, a, what an extraordinary act of courage. Eubank saved the young girl and lived to tell about it. If you're not moved by that, you, you need a heart transplant. His act of heroism caught on camera catapulted his work into the global spotlight. CBN News joined Eubank on the front lines and found a man of constant prayer. We can't take care of everybody, mm -hmm. but you can take care of the person in front of you. Yeah, and are these some of the kids that you're trying Hello. to take care of? Yes, they've been out here three days and we have food, but it's the same thing every day. It's all we got and some water. So I'm going to pray real quick. Yeah, Lord it. Jesus, help these people mm -hmm. go to a safe place and a good place tonight. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Eubank tells North he's not afraid because of the love he has for those he's trying to help. And when you love, he says, fear is no longer a priority. Don't be afraid to suffer. Don't think that being Christians means you're not going to suffer. A man who knows a thing or two about courage, North says Eubank displays the type of bravery that would earn him a chest full of medals if he still served in the military. You know, the word hero has been much abused in our, in our culture today. A hero can be somebody who catches a pass in an end zone or uh, sets a new Olympic record of some kind in the jargon of our day. The classical definition of a hero is a person who puts themselves at risk for the benefit of someone else. As a role model for Christians, North says you can't find a better man than Dave. He says, for example, I mean, he's, I've, I've seen him say it to others, not just to me. All I am is an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And without love, which of course the good book is full of love, and sacrifice, I mean, this is biblical stuff. And, and what Dave does is he doesn't just talk about it, he does it. And, and to me, that's an even more important aspect of his faith because, I, I, look, I got 17 grandkids. I can tell them something, but if I show them something, I'll never forget it. And that's what Dave has done out there time and time again. But deep in my heart, I have no fear. Deep in my heart, I have no fear. For I know my God is near. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. Up next, the political divide in Washington keeps getting wider. See how these Christian lawmakers are uniting over prayer. Parents, the Superbook Bible app is a great way to get your child reading the Bible because in today's busy world, we can use some help. The free Superbook Bible app has fun stuff your kids will love. They'll have a blast learning the Bible, playing great games. Did you win? watching cool videos, discovering heroes in the Bible. They'll have fun while they learn God's Word. The Superbook Kids Bible app, available now. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest, life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your every day. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. life. Live it fully. CBN.com. We had four jobs that didn't go right, but, you know, we didn't waver in our faith. That's when God put on my heart that we needed to do the well. Within a couple of days, we got an insurance refund check that we had no idea was coming. And here we are, you know, this year, it's just boom. <laughs> you go out and help other people and you get rewarded for it. Get Pat Robertson's latest teaching, Miraculous Blessings. Faith-based groups celebrated when President Trump recently signed a criminal justice reform law. Supporters thanked God during the Oval Office event. I want to give all glory to God because God is why this and why we are standing here together right now. When I was in federal prison for three years, there was no hope. There was no programming. There was nothing for anyone. We didn't have, as a woman who was incarcerated, we fought to make sure we had sanitary napkins and, and, and hygiene products to us. Their sisters like Pamela Wynn, who lost her baby because she was shackled during child labor. Mm. And now this will all end. That's right. That's right. Mm. And my sisters and brothers who are presently incarcerated and watching because they have called me all morning, yeah. we have been fighting and we will continue to fight and this is just a first step. 
We are looking forward to continuing to work with you, President, you. and to make sure that our people will have everything that they need when they come home so that we can all have an opportunity to transform our lives. The law addresses the nation's exploding prison population and includes sentencing reform. Well, Washington, D.C. seems to be more divided than ever these days, so it may be surprising to hear that there's a bipartisan group of lawmakers that does get together and gets along, lifting each other in prayer every week. Abigail Robertson brings us more. In this deeply partisan political climate, it may come as a surprise to many people that a group of Senate Democrats and Republicans come together each week to pray. It is literally the most liberal Democrats and the most conservative Republicans. It's not just, you know, the centrist group. Democratic Senator Chris Coons, who leads the group with Republican Senator James Lankford, tells CBN News it's the best hour of his week. We do two things we don't otherwise do. We listen to each other and we trust each other. The only non-senator present is Senate Chaplain Barry Black. Each week, a different senator is picked to share a message to the group. Because what you're sharing is exactly what an opposition research guy would love to know in your next campaign, your weakness. How have you fallen short? What's, what's been difficult about your childhood, about your marriage, about your public service, about, that's the sort, these aren't just sort of easy two-dimensional, these are folks really sharing of themselves. They close each meeting holding hands in prayer. Kuhn says friendships made in the prayer group have helped improve his working relationships with members. Look, it is really tough to throw a punch, at least verbally, on the floor of the Senate or in an interview when that morning you were holding hands in prayer. And that's powerful. That's important. From your perspective being here, do you feel like Washington is as divided as it feels like on the news? Yes. Um, I'll tell you that the, the thing that's easy to miss um, is that we've got some incredibly uh, smart and capable and motivated um, senators who all came here intending to make the country better. Um, yet we find it awfully hard to compromise. One of the trends hurting relationships on the Hill is a lack of social interaction because lawmakers don't live here anymore. A generation or two ago, everyone, all senators moved their families here. And so they knew each other as parents on the edge of a soccer or baseball field, uh, as much as they knew each other as, you know, combatants on the Senate floor. And when you got up here, what did you expect as far as relationships with members of the other side of the aisle? And what have they been like? Um, well, Joe Biden, who, who preceded me, um, talked a lot uh, at home about his strong relationships. Um, and, you know, when I was uh, much younger and in politics, he'd talk about my friend Orrin Hatch and my friend John McCain. And I think, oh, come on, you guys are right. You, you don't share any core political views. And as I got here and and I got the experience and I'd have to say the blessing of serving with, legislating with, traveling with Senator McCain, Senator Hatch and a dozen other colleagues, um, I gradually came to realize it really is possible to be genuine friends. Kuhn says one of his best friends and mentors here is someone with whom he shares no political views. Republican Senator Johnny Isaacson of Georgia. If you're willing to do the work, if you're willing to, you know, travel together, meet each other's families, um, spend time listening, you, you can build amazing relationships here. He admits, though, some take a long time to heal, such as the recent Supreme Court confirmation of Justice Brett Kavanaugh. There was a particularly heated exchange with Senator Graham, who I, I really, I have traveled with, I've legislated with, I'm fairly close to Senator Graham. Um, and that was a particularly hard moment for me. A week later, Graham reached out to Coons with an invitation to meet with Jared Kushner and hear the administration's plan for peace in the Middle East. He admitted it took a few days of consideration before finally accepting. And I came home and, uh, you know, my wife said, what are you doing meeting with Lindsey Graham, you know? And I said, honey, I'm still mad about the Kavanaugh hearings. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm, I'm still upset about that. But it was a meeting about peace. <laughs> and, I, you know, my job is to figure out a way to keep working with Senator Graham on the things that we share and we care about and are important to our country. Coons hopes in time they can overcome the past and reconcile. It is hard. It is not easy to get over some of the fights we have here. Um, but that's what I think the people of Delaware hired me to do, is to stick to principle on issues of core principle, 
but work across the aisle and find ways to respect each other and work together. A strong motivation for Coons to restore relationships is his awareness that the world is watching. And in dozens of countries around the world, they look at the Senate and they look at the Congress and they look at the United States and they say, democracy doesn't work. Mm -hmm. That's bad. So I remind my colleagues, look folks, it's not just our kids who are watching, it's our kids, it's the rest of the world and it's history. And we have to show that this is the best way to resolve conflict peaceably and that we can really solve those problems that the average American wants us to tackle. Coons tells me he hopes the upcoming divided Congress can force both parties to compromise on major issues that Americans are ready to see resolved. Reporting from Capitol Hill, Abigail Robertson, CBN News. Thanks, Abigail. And to see more stories of believers making a difference, just go to our Christian World News website. We'll be right back. When you give, smiles grow bigger. When you care, homes are happier. When you comfort, the hurt goes away. When we all come together to love, miracles happen. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. My husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. Hello? Is this thing on? Hey, kids, do you love games? And do you love discovering things? Yeah. Well, do you? Yeah. Then you're gonna love this. It's the new free Superbook Kids Bible app. You can play games, watch videos, find answers to your questions, and a whole lot more. The new Superbook Kids Bible app. Free downloads available on iTunes and Google Play now. Operation Blessing is celebrating a busy year here at home and around the globe. Operation Blessing's programs have provided clean water, disaster relief, medical care, hunger relief, and micro-enterprise projects. From Israel to Honduras to Senegal to Puerto Rico, the ministry's partners help suffering families get back on their feet. We love Operation Blessing. Well, thanks so much for joining us this week on Christian World News. From all of us here until next week, goodbye and God bless you and Happy New Year. We'll see you next time. <laughs>